So there are five skill sets that we train in our Navy SEALs golf training program. One being putting. To be really good at putting, you need to learn information and knowledge and train how to read a green. Once you've read the green, you've got to learn how to hit your line over and over, consistently hit that blade of grass and roll across that line. And then, obviously, you need to hit it on the right speed. Speed, speed, distance control. Then there's finesse wedges. Finesse wedges are pitching and chipping around the green. Finesse wedges, pitching and chipping. So the, the chipping motion is, you know, we don't let the club head pass our hands. We just chip it, chipping motion. And then there's a pitching motion where the club head will pass the hands, pass the hands, pass the hands. So there's a different sequence in how to train the hands. You have to educate your hands of, you know, how to move your hands. You know, because the hands can either cock and uncock. They can turn and roll, and they can bend and arch, and that's all covered in our educated hands training. Then there's the, the green side bunker, where the club head is definitely going to pass the hands and just slide under the sand and pop the ball up in the air. That's a different sequence. Then there's the distance wedge sequence, where we're getting to a certain position, whether it's 7.30 or 9 o'clock, and we're having a different sequence down, but most importantly, to be really good at distance wedges, you wanna keep those hands driving forward and don't let the club head pass the hands. You wanna keep the hands in front, and so the swing would look more like that, where the... So we go from a cocky motion to an uncocky motion, from a bent motion to an arched motion, and this is the position here at impact, and that's for chipping distance wedges in the full swing. And then the full swing is the most important, in my opinion, and I think there's some statistics that show that, ball striking, ball striking, ball striking. And so some of the stuff that we've been doing the last three weeks is making sure that we have a really good startup and not allowing the hands to come inside or the club head to come inside too much. But when we look at uh, the full swing, we, the way that we train for the full swing and ball striking is first we demonstrate and show you how you can build a full swing in a mirror without ever hitting a golf ball during the middle of winter. Where the weight is on the feet, how the, the muscles in the calves and, and shins are engaged, how the quads and the hamstrings are engaged, how the glutes engage, where the core muscles are engaged, when they're engaged, and just really training how to start the backswing first, and then bringing in your lead arm, left arm if you're right-handed, the left arm elevates and comes just over to my right ear here. It's only about four inches. Left arm elevation, right arm, is simply going to slightly bend and then externally rotate. And some, some students in here can't move their body in certain positions so that compensation. So one of the things that we train on is stability and mobility, but most important, flexibility. And in standing up, do you have the ability to have external rotation in your arm? And what about when you're in golf posture? Do you have that same external rotation in your arm? Because if you can't rotate your arm any further than this, well, there's going to be some compensation you're going to do in your golf swing. So we've got to stretch that out or, or design a swing around that. So ball striking, we did uh, best full swing part one, two, and three. And in three weeks, you can build a brand new motor pattern just with a few minutes a day, working on the right positions as far as starting back, bringing in your left arm, elevating your left arm, finishing the pivot and the shoulder turn, and now you have a perfect backswing. And then we work on the downswing, squat to square, post up, impact, finish, and fall through. But one of the common things we see in our students and the people in this group, in all golfers, 
is when they take their back swing, this club head comes inside here. And so for this training, I've got a cone set up here and I've got an impact bag set up here because this is what we're working on this week as far as having a perfect startup, a perfect back swing to the top. And now I'm all set in what it looks like face on. Got all this depth, so I can just take my hands with all this depth back here and just drive it out towards right field or on an angle set up with this impact bag. And so the drills that we're doing here, so I don't come inside this cone, I have this cone set up right here so I don't hit the cone. Doesn't, that won't allow me to come too far inside. I simply just, once I start my shoulder turn or start my pivot here, all I'm gonna do is hinge or cock my left wrist. So from here, the hinge motion brings it right up there and it doesn't allow it to come too far inside. So the drill that you can put is a club right against your belly button, turn your pivot, your shoulder, and your power package. Cock your left wrist and finish your shoulder turn. And then once we're here, I want to take the butt of the club head and direct it right at the ball. Just like that. And so this drill that we're training, remember golf, there's no muscle memory. It's only, only a motor control skill. And everything you've already learned, just like riding a bike, you cannot unlearn it unless you have a brain injury. But what we can do is we can write a whole new motor pattern over your old pattern and drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it. Practice under pressure, do performance drills under pressure so that you can actually trust it on the golf course. And so you can set up station like this, work on your back swing to the top, Work on the start down, work on impact, and then your release pattern with your hands. The release pattern with your hands, I could come right here, but this is still on an angled hinge, and so that face is open, so it's going to start out to the right and it's going to go more right. And so, what we want to do is we want to take this angled hinge, this angled hand, and get it to either horizontal or over roll it. And we over roll it for training purposes to get quicker feedback. So if, if your release pattern is a result of where your ball starts, so if your ball is so used to starting left, where well your release pattern is, uh-oh, let me get my hand this way so the club face is open, that way it fades or slices back towards the fairway. And so the release pattern is a result of your hand path or your starting line, where you're starting it, and what, what I'm training is to make sure that my hand pack and my start line all starts out to the right. So, meaning, I want the ball to start every single time. I want the ball to start out to the right that way, and then draw back towards the flag. That's my stock shot that I'm training, and continue to train. And so, back to the top, hold this pattern, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and as you can see, my head's not touching this. Old pattern would be to tumble my shoulder to, to tumble my shoulders forward, my head's over here, versus the new pattern, which is here, head stays behind the ball. Just like that. This is a good training aid to help do that.
1001, 1002, 1003. So I'll just sit here and work on new patterns to get inside my subconscious motor control pattern inside my brain. So here's the, the startup, left arm elevation, wrist hinge, finish the shoulder turn, finish the hip turn, the pivot, start down with my hands, the butt of the, butt of the club head towards the ball, just like that. Looks just like this, face on. So that's what we're training on this week, making sure we have a really great, reliable, consistent takeaway startup, starts in front of our body on plane, comes up nice and shallow, no depth here where it would be way out there, and then the hand path coming in to get the ball to start off to the right, and then impact bag to make sure that our hands are driving, our hands are driving, and then we get this lead, lead hand just like this, not angled, not vertical, but what we call horizontal. Just like that. So those are the, those are the, those are the five skills we train. So the eight things that we train in our Navy SEALs golf training program start off most importantly with fitness. You know, depend whether you're 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, or 30, or even in your 20s or your teens, most of our students are in their 50s to 80s. 40s to 80s, 30s to 80s. Fitness, stability, mobility, but most importantly at our age, flexibility. Do you have the flexibility? And we customize something specifically to get you more flexibility. I see a lot of people asking for the thing about I need stretching, I need stretching. That's one of the, one of the biggest things that we train on and what makes our students so happy is they start to feel better and sleep like a baby within, within three weeks. Then we dive right into putting. We're going to laser focus on green reading, hitting your line, and controlling your speed for a full 10 days. You're going to learn it, you're going to train it, and you're going to get feedback from me. Then finesse wedge. You're going to learn it, you're going to train it, you're going to get feedback from me in 10 days. And then bunker. Greenside bunker, you're going to learn it, you're going to train to get feedback from me. So within the first 30 days, depending on where you're at in your score-wise, it's likely you can drop anywhere between 6 to 12 strokes in the first 30 days. And you get in really good shape, you feel good, you get rid of some lower back pain, neck pains, and all the other injuries you have, shoulder issues. Then what, what we just talked about earlier in this training is the best full swing series, part 1, 2, and 3. You're going to train it for 7 days in a mirror, over and over and over, and then I'm going to review it, make sure you're doing it right, and then you go on to the next piece, do it for seven days, train it, drill it, make sure you're doing it right with me, and then part three, you do the same thing, you drill it, you train it, and so within 21 days, now you've got a really good motor control pattern in your brain, and this is all done in the very first month. That way, from month two and three, we can laser focus on ball striking and distance wedges, we can laser focus on the the tee box, the drivers, the, the irons, the woods, all the stuff that you're having a hard time hitting the fairway, shanking it, pulling it, pushing it, slicing it, hooking it, all that stuff. And then we work on mindset and confidence and core strategy, diet, exercise, meditation. Just totally in 12 weeks, three months, you can go from a, a whole shitstorm of bad scores and, and issues with your body and completely transform your life and your golf game. So my challenge with, you know, 10 days left of the year is we're taking on eight students this week. Eight students that want to drop eight strokes or 10 strokes or 20 strokes. I encourage you to click on that link to watch our movie, low70golf.com. You see some stories, some really 
uh, inspiring stories of our students that have just crushed it, have gone from 120 to 80, 89, have gone from 100 to 85, have gone from, from 88 to 68, from 94 to 73. And here it is. This is, this is specifically for all you in this group that are in the northern states, you know, Detroit, Chicago, Buffalo, Boston, you know, New York, New Jersey, Indiana, Illinois. You can't play golf right now, but what you could do is train. And last, at the end of this year, you said, oh, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot in the 70s. I'm going to drop some strokes, and here you are shooting 85s and 86s again, or 94s. My challenge to you is step up and play the game the way it's supposed to be played, 72 strokes. You can shoot 72 strokes in a round of golf. All you need is support, a blueprint, structured training, mentorship, coaching, training, accountability, training, accountability, training. The blueprint's here. All you need is desire. So I, I, I challenge anybody that's listening to this today to schedule a call today. We're only taking two students today and eight this week. We've got enough on our calendar to help you out work, work together one-on-one. -on -one. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I'll see you guys soon.